Welcome viewers, our guest today is Honorable Mike Bernier, Business Minister of Education and MLA for Peace River South. Thank you Mike for joining That's us. It's my pleasure, thank you. So first of all, please tell us about yourself as a community member of the Peace Region. Well, you know, it's obviously the best place uh, to live in the province. I, I absolutely love uh, being Peace River South. Dawson Creek is my home. Uh, I've raised my family there. Um, it's just been an exciting uh, part of my life. Uh, I think most people probably know, uh, you know, I've been around the community for about 30 years, uh, really active originally uh, as a volunteer in the community. And one thing led to another. Um, and uh, having friends on council, eventually getting onto council, becoming the mayor of Dawson Creek, you know, those were uh, amazing, uh, memorable times of my life. And now to be the MLA uh, representing uh, the entire South Peace is quite an honor. I'm really excited to be doing this job. Very good. Please tell us a little more about your very successful political career. Well, it's uh, it's been exciting. You know, I've been doing uh, politics, I guess, uh, representing the, the region now for about 12, 13 years. So it's it's been, uh, as I say, very memorable. It's an amazing honor to represent people. But uh, again, when you look back at uh, the job, I guess, if you want, it doesn't feel like a job. It uh, When you're out trying to help people, when you're out uh, listening to concerns and really just uh, doing what you can to uh, to move things forward for the region, try to make a difference. And, uh, you know, where I think uh, everybody in this region, where all of the different uh, elected officials up here have been successful, is really understanding uh, what makes our region. And that's that sense of community. It's, it's listening to people, uh, trying to uh, value their concerns and, and do what you can to help. Very good. And please tell us about your responsibilities as the Education Minister of PC. Sure. So that's, uh, thanks, that's been... Uh, a really exciting time as well. So about uh, over about a year ago, I guess now, uh, the Premier asked if I would take over the portfolio as the Minister of Education uh, for the province. Uh, it's, you know, I think as a lot of people would recognize, it's quite a large portfolio. It, uh, it's very, um, very humbling to be in there dealing with, uh, dealing with the exciting part, which is children. Uh, getting out around the province, touring schools, uh, meeting with the students, seeing how amazing our education system is in British Columbia, the great work that teachers do uh, in our school system and all the support staff. Uh, you know, we have one of uh, the best education systems in the world. One of the things that I've discovered in this role is just how important that Dogwood uh, diploma is. When you look at Europe, when you look at Asia, other parts of the world who actually come to British Columbia because they recognize the value they know that uh, for their students to have a BC Dogwood Diploma will set them up for uh, great opportunities in life. Um, we have uh, recognized globally, uh, we've been recognized as one of the, the best systems uh, in the world. So it's uh, very exciting to be part of that, try to move things forward. Um, we're in the process right now of rolling out a new curriculum, a three-year transition for a new curriculum around the province because we are already one of the best systems in the world, but the world is changing. So we want to make sure that we're adapting you know, with technology, with coding, with robotics. There's so many different things taking place now that our students need to be prepared for, uh, for the changing world. And so we're changing our education system uh, to match that and we're seeing uh, great success there. Very good, thank you. And you have a good voice and you were also a rock singer in the 1980s. Wow. How can we rock the world with education? <laughs> Well, we're dating ourselves, aren't we, with that? That's back when I knew how to grow hair, too. <laughs> um, but, you know, I spent a lot of time uh, as a musician. Uh, I spent a lot of time in my school years uh, playing in bands, uh, playing instruments, and mostly singing. Uh, one of the passions I have is to ensure that we have music of whatever sorts, and the arts in general, uh, in our uh, school system. You know, education is really important, but I think the arts really helps a student be well-rounded. You know, I look at my personal experience after I left school. Uh, having that background in the arts uh, really, uh, I think, set me up to be uh, more understanding in so many ways of the different components that make up society. It really helps, I think, when you go into the workforce to, to be more broad in your experiences. And music just sets the stage, uh, if nothing else, uh, to be able to have a pastime, a passion, something outside of, of uh, the stresses of everyday life that you can actually uh, enjoy. Uh, and so for myself, we're working with uh, Music Canada, 
we've made a commitment for the education system uh, to try to ensure that we uh, profile and highlight uh, partnerships to keep uh, music involved uh, in the school system. Sco Music's important to recognize though, because it's not just the instruments and the singing. Uh, with technology now, whether it's training somebody to run a soundboard, whether it's somebody who's going to be working behind the scenes in a s recording studio, working on pyrotechnics, working on lighting. Uh, the music industry is so large uh, that there's amazing opportunities for people if they want to make a career out of it as well. Absolutely. Thank you. And what do you believe are exceptional strengths of our peace region? Well, one of the things I've always said I think is our biggest strength uh, in the entire peace region is our, is our sense of community. And when you look at any time there's you know, something that happens in the area, area whether it's you know, flooding, whether it's uh, somebody's devastated by a fire, uh, anything that takes place up here that might be negatively affecting somebody, the community comes together. Uh, that's one of the things that I would say that is our, our real strength because um, anytime somebody's in need, we're, people here are there for them. I always say that, uh, you know, it's that, you know, that barn raising mentality. Somebody needs help, we're there. You know, I look at the first experience that I had when I moved to this region and bought my first house. Uh, as an example, one of the things I needed to do was put a new roof on my house. Put the ladder up, went out and bought the shingles. I had everything up on the roof. I was ready to start roofing. And within about two hours, the, the ladder started to shake and next thing I know is it's a gentleman walking up from two doors down, a hammer in his hand and a couple of drinks and said, uh, hey, welcome to the neighborhood, I'll help you put on your new roof. Uh, within a day I had four people up there helping me put this new roof on and to me that's just, you know, people I didn't know, I was new to the community and that to me just highlights what this region is really about is, um, you know, we're just, we're connected, we support each other and uh, we respect each other's differences, but we're always there to make sure that anybody that needs help, we're, we're there to help them. Excellent. And similarly, feeling for our community. Now, sadly, unemployment in Northeastern BC has increased to 10% and it's our obligation to support. So what support do you think the provincial government can provide in this situation? Yeah, you know, and that's, that's something obviously that's really uh, problematic right now. Uh, we have gone over the last couple of years from um, basically the lowest unemployment to the highest. And that has mostly uh, been the cause because of the downturn in the oil and gas sector. Uh, we saw amazing growth and boom over a 10 year period uh, in there, in that area. And, uh, you know, I think from a provincial standpoint, the number one issue is we've recognized that. Uh, LNG, as people know, is a huge um, opportunity for British Columbia, but not so much British Columbia as, as it is for the Peace Region, because um, if we're going to have any LNG projects go to fruition, um, the gas needs to come from this area. We are uh, the breadbasket of natural gas uh, for the province of British Columbia. Uh, most people understand that. Uh, they support that because they understand now, especially with the downturn, uh, when your children or as a uh, household, if you don't have that employment, you start realizing how important that energy sector is for putting food on the table, uh, for quality of life, and for really keeping the uh, opportunities uh, in the region. Uh, we've done a, an amazing job in the Peace Region of trying to build out our infrastructure. Uh, whether you look at the Pomeroy Center in Fort St. John, the Encana Event Center in Dawson Creek, you know, those opportunities wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for uh, the growth in the area because of oil and gas. Um, we need to make sure we're doing everything we can as a province to promote LNG, to promote the industry, uh, because that's what's going to keep people here and it's going to keep uh, the opportunities flowing. Thank you. And just like the provincial government, how can the federal government provide more support to our community in present economic circumstances? Sure. I, well, I think the from a federal government standpoint, I guess I would take it to almost three levels of government. You have the local government, the regional district, uh, municipalities, the provincial government with myself, and uh, then you've got Bob Zimmer as our MP. That relationship with all three levels of government uh, is really important. Uh, right now with the federal liberals uh, in power, one of the big things that we're talking with them about, uh, actively uh, communicating with them, is around the importance around LNG. Right now, one of the largest uh, projects in uh, Canadian history, uh, the Petronas project, um, off the coast there by Prince Rupert for that LNG uh, 
uh, project uh, is with the federal government for a final decision around their environmental assessment certificate. Most of the permits have been uh, accomplished in British Columbia. The pipeline is ready to go. Uh, most of the uh, accommodation uh, and uh, uh, opportunities have been signed off. Now we need the federal government to really recognize the importance of LNG, recognize not only what it's going to bring to British Columbia, but Canada as a whole. Uh, when you're talking about over $30 billion of investment, thousands of jobs, this is a huge opportunity that we don't want to uh, let go by. Thank you. And sadly, our community has been affected by fires and then floods. So what relief assistance is available to the residents? Please tell us a little more. Well, we. Unfortunately, as you mentioned, it's been uh, an incredibly um, weird in a lot of ways when you, the weather patterns uh, over the uh, the last couple of months. When we looked at this region, mostly in the in the north piece, uh, with the devastation of uh, you know I think we had over 40 fires uh, taking place in the area, to within uh, a couple of weeks to a month, all of a sudden one of the worst floods. I think it was the worst flood in recorded history uh, down in the south piece. We had over 150, I believe it was, roads and bridges washed out uh, in the south piece between the Pine Pass and uh, Dawson Creek. Um, one of the big commitments we have, obviously, is having our provincial staff on the ground assessing the situation. And they've, I have to give a big thanks to them. Our Ministry of Transportation staff, Environment, and our uh, Forest Lands Natural Resources um, staff in the region have done just an incredible job in uh, recognition of how much damage there actually was. To get the Pine Pass back open within a week, to get some of the road networks and people to be able to leave their homes open within a couple of days, uh, you know, they did an amazing job. There's, uh, I've seen pictures, I've met with people, and there's some real unfortunate devastation that's taking place, some life-changing uh, uh, devastation that's taking place for some people, specifically around the Chetwin area. Uh, from a provincial standpoint, uh, you know, I'm hoping that a lot of these people have insurance. We're not. Uh, we have, um, you know, financial assistance that we're looking at through the provincial government to assist, assist these people. And uh, at the same time, we need to be doing uh, studies to ensure that uh, where we can make changes to avoid this in the future. Although we can't control Mother Nature, if there's ways we can look at our infrastructure to do things better, whether that's replacing a culvert with a bridge, uh, whether that's making the culverts bigger, those are things we need to be looking at and, and that's the studies we're going to be doing as a province. Thank you. And please highlight Premier Clark's support mm -hmm. and commitment for our community. You know, that was uh, you know, something that I was really pleased about. Uh, I, the Premier actually, within 24 hours, you know, as all of the news reports started of, of the uh, damage that was taking place in the area, the Premier phoned me and uh, she said, you know, she gave best wishes to myself, pass it on to the community, but she said, you know, I need to come up to the South Peace, I need to talk to people and I need to see what's going on. So I was very uh, pleased that, uh, that she did that. Within a couple of days, she was uh, in Dawson Creek. Of course, it would have been nice if time permitted for her to get to the entire region, but understandably, that's not always uh, an option. So um, I know she came up to Dawson Creek, met with people who were affected, uh, talked about what the province was going to be doing to try to uh, help them out around uh, disaster uh, financial assistance. Um, she also took that opportunity to meet with uh, Dale Bumstead, the local mayor in Dawson Creek, and to reach out to other elected officials as well to say that, um, you know, we understand, we're there to help, uh, but more importantly, going forward in the future, let's work together uh, to look at opportunities of, um, uh, of how we do things differently and do things better. And so that was great uh, to have her there. It was also important as the local MLA to be able to showcase uh, to the Premier here's where we think some of the changes need to take place and to have her support to say yes we should be looking at those uh, that was great to have and what do you intend to accomplish for our community in the next few years well first of all you know i've really enjoyed the last three years um, as the local mla we have just under a year uh, until the next election and i can tell you that uh, that first year has uh, first term uh, has really flown by uh, it's you know it's a big learning curve. Uh, I think that this job, no different than when I ran for mayor, 
when you get into this position, uh, you can do all the research you want until you're actually doing it. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, hard to explain. Um, it's, it's an amazing opportunity, a lot of travel, uh, but being the furthest MLA really away from uh, Victoria, unfortunately, keeps me away from home sometimes more than uh, some people would like because you'd like to be on the ground in the community. Um, my job is when I am here is to make sure I do everything I can to be out in the community, uh, listening to the issues uh, and representing the people as best I can. Um, again, the first first term has uh, has been really exciting. Um, I have announced that I will be running one more term. So looking forward to hopefully uh, continuing on in this role and, and doing whatever I can uh, to make changes, uh, positive changes and, and help the people in the region. Great, thank you. And who have been role models to you? Wow, that's... Uh, that's interesting, you know, I've had so many different paths in my life that I've had different role models uh, throughout uh, in so many ways. And I can tell you that um, I don't know if there's ever been one specific person who stood out because every time you go through a different path in life, uh, you kind of lean towards, okay, who's somebody that I can kind of learn from? And, you know, I look in Dawson Creek, for instance, uh, when I got onto council, there was a lot of great councillors before me. There were a lot of great mayors uh, before me, and every single one of them had strengths that you could uh, learn from. And the same, I would say, in provincial politics. I don't think there's been uh, one particular uh, person who's really been the, the shining star that I said, I want to emulate that person, because you know I need to be my own. But at the same time, every single person, Gordon Campbell had some amazing uh, talents and strengths that I respected. Uh, Premier Clark uh, is an amazing uh, leader. Uh, the way she holds our coalition of the BC Liberals together, which is everything from you know Liberals to Conservatives and BC Conservatives all in the same tent. The way she can hold that group together and where we all have respect for each other. Uh, she's shown amazing leadership. Uh, so I think again it's um, Every, every path you take, I think you can try to find strengths from somebody else that you can learn from. So our peace region is full of life. There are so many activities going on, social, economic. What are the things you prefer to get involved in as an MLA? Well, you know, there's, you're right. There's, there's always something going on uh, in the peace region. Uh, never a dull moment <laughs> and, and it's so diverse uh, I can tell you uh, this spring uh, being involved in everything from you know the world chainsaw carving competition in Chetwin of course anybody who hasn't gone and spent a day or two in Chetwin if nothing else driving around looking at all the carvings you've got to do that I always try to tell all my friends drive through Chetwin and 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 see that uh, we have uh, Grizz Fest coming up I know in August long weekend in uh, in Tumblr Ridge, something they do every year, brings in hundreds and hundreds of people and of course my passion uh, brings in a bunch of musicians and bands so it's exciting to be out there. So I always try to partake in that. Um, of course the greatest show in the piece is the uh, the Fall Fair that takes place uh, I think second week of August in Dawson Creek. Uh, that there when you bring in tens of thousands of people into the region um, you know, of course, I think everybody in the region uh, takes part in at least a day or two uh, in there. And of course, we have our, our car show, our big show and shine in July. This year, we're going to have the second annual uh, music uh, in the park on the Sunday uh, as well. So uh, really excited because, of course, I'm getting up on stage and singing. First time I've my band's played in probably 10 years together like this. So uh, all these different things that take place around uh, the region. The one thing that's exciting is you don't have to travel far uh, to find something to do uh, in the Peace Region because there's always a group, there's always somebody volunteering, uh, always somebody putting on something that we can do here. So, uh, you know, as the local MLA, uh, sometimes there's not enough hours in the day to hit them all, but, uh, you know, I really want to thank all of the people who are involved in putting on all these events, as I say almost every single one of them are put on by volunteers and it wouldn't, uh, wouldn't happen without them. So big thanks to them. Very good. Thank you. And just a little about the global community. We are all members of the global community. Unfortunately, every seventh person on the planet is hungry, affected with, sadly, uh, poverty, disease. Education is something which is a very important tool. It's key to individual development, social development. How can education possibly solve the problems of the world? 
Wow, I wish uh, I could answer that one really quickly because then I uh, probably wouldn't be doing this job if I can solve poverty and <laughs> all the issues around the world. But what, what I would say around education is it's really understanding uh, the different uh, socioeconomic challenges around the world, learning from them. Sometimes I have to say from, from our end, we forget how lucky we are to be Canadian. Um, if people have had the privilege of traveling around the world, I've, I've been very fortunate where I've traveled to a lot of different areas around the world, and I've seen the, the economic and social differences that people go through. And we can always do things better. Uh, we can always look at ways to improve in Canada. Um, but I can tell you that sometimes we forget how lucky we are. Our education system I think is part of that. We can not only educate to make sure we are grounded, that we're preparing our students and our children for the world, uh, but what I've learned in the education portfolio is also how small the world really is. When we have uh, an amazing international program in, our, in British Columbia in our education system, and when you have students coming from China uh, learning in British Columbia, students coming from France uh, learning in British Columbia, and you learn from them about their differences. More importantly, you can learn from them about what their strengths are and how we can adapt as well to make sure we're always looking at doing things better. So our education system, I think that's why it's one of the best in the world, is we learn from others and we adapt and uh, make sure our students are prepared for, as you say, like that global uh, economy. and. I think in British Columbia one of the things and strengths we have is a sense of compassion. So we learn about where there are issues in other parts of the world and you'll see the people in British Columbia stepping up to help them as well. Thank you. And what would be your vision of the ideal world? Wow. Um, the ideal world would be, you know, everybody has the same opportunities. And w again, when you look at how lucky we are here in British Columbia, um, you know, I would hope that for everybody. Uh, when you look at the fact that we have a growing population, but to your point, that we have parts of the world where, where children are, are hungry, that shouldn't happen. That happens here in British Columbia as well. And we need to make sure we're always looking at ways to, to help uh, people. I think that's, again, part of British Columbia is how do you have that sense of compassion which we have? And if we could emulate that around the world, uh, I think we would start seeing less and less violence, less and less people being hungry, and more and more support for, for each other. So, you know, I guess that would be my ideal wish. I uh, uh, wish it would be something that one person can fix. I think it's going to take all the nations, it's going to take uh, society in general to start recognizing that uh, we need to work collectively. Thank you. And finally, Mike, what's your message for our peace community? Well, I would. Uh, I guess say to everybody in the peace community is uh, a, a big thank you, first of all, uh, for giving me the honor uh, of representing them. But I think the other thing is just to keep doing what we're doing, and that's uh, be proud of where we live, be proud of the work we do, let's keep being out there supporting each other. And you know, anytime there's, there's opportunities, I know people step up, and I just don't want that to change. Uh, that's one of the things through my entire political career uh, that I've bragged about, uh, about this region, about how great it is. And I know that uh, when, when you're on the streets, that's what everybody else talks about as well. Let's keep that sense of community. Let's work together. Um, we have amazing opportunities up here. We have amazing challenges and differences of opinion as well. But when it comes right down to it, uh, we know we can work together. Uh, we want to make this the best place possible to raise our children. And that's what my hope is for everybody, that we keep looking for opportunities. Uh, so my children, everybody's children, can be proud of living here and have a great long life in the beautiful part of British Columbia. Thank you, Mike. Okay. And thank you for your oh, services for the pleasure. community. Thanks so much for having me today. Welcome. It's my thank pleasure. You.